Good afternoon. Welcome to Holy Spirit. As we celebrate this day of Ash Wednesday, the beginning of our movement into Lent and into introspection and reflection and the ability to confess where we fall short and where God lifts us up. I'd like to remind you that the worship leaflet is available to you at the bottom of your YouTube screen to click on or in the email that was sent to you or on our website there should be a, a worship leaflet labeled Ash Wednesday as well. So please join in as you are able and participate whether it's kneeling or standing as you are able. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the people, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the first reading is a portion of Psalm 103. Please pray it with me. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Good morning. The second reading today is a reading from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, 
so in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful spirit, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter six, verses one through six, and 16 through 21. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Ash Wednesday liturgy is one of the most powerful that we have, and it's poised right at the very beginning of Lent to set the stage to prepare us for the days ahead in walking the way of Jesus.
towards Jerusalem and all that follows. But it is not just a reenactment of that journey. While the scriptures will take us there and we will know the different messages that come around the steps that took Jesus on his way, we will also be making our own journey in our own day, in our own way. And one of the ways we do that is spoken to quite clearly in our scriptures today. It has two parts in terms of being an individual, internal retrospective, if you will, looking at our hearts and opening ourselves to let God shine light into those broken places and bring healing through forgiveness. It is also for the community, thus the language is both I and we. Because the community as a whole has responsibilities and does things or neglects to do things as a whole that we are called to by God. The words that most jump out at me are the ones about render not your garments, but render your heart. And the language of things being done in secret. What we do this day and what we do going into Lent is very intimate and personal for the individual. It can also be very intimate and personal for the whole community as reflected in our uh, laments and prayers this day. It is also reflected in the gospel where Jesus is very clear that what we're doing is getting our hearts opened up, getting ourselves available to God to do the work that we spend so much time hiding and holding back to our pain and sorrow, to the pain and sorrow of so many others. It's hard to look at painful places. It's hard to own where we said a cutting word some time ago, and now we don't know how to amend that because it's gone on so long and it seems so entrenched. That's just one example. The things that we would like to be able to get out of our hearts and into God's hands where they can be healed, set free, renewed. Another way of saying to bring peace into our internal being as well as in the world around us. But we need to make the first step and the second and the third. We need to make the space at home or in some place that we can go to, taking a walk, going up in the snow on a mountain, whatever works for you, to be able to open up and actually allow yourself, myself, to feel the heartache and to be willing to trust God with that heartache. For some, it's, it's a very one-on-one -on -one heartache with another. For others, it's the heartache of the world, the things that seem so big that we cannot mend. They seem almost impossible for us to do anything about. And yet we know that God is with us. God has not abandoned us. And the Spirit is moving. 
And the way to tap into that power of the spirit is to allow ourselves to be as authentic and real with the one who above all loves us just as we are and wants us to have joy and new life, but is also very aware that we are broken people and our brokenness harms one another and our selfishness and our power grabs and so many things that we just take for granted that others would cherish if they could even have a little bit. It can be a difficult journey to go to the heart, but it can be a very powerful healing place. And so this is the time to set ourselves on that path, not to beat ourselves up for the past, but to open ourselves to God using the various practices that may work for us in terms of our temperament and what we are comfortable with, whether it's sitting in silence, the contemplative way, whether it's the walking active way, whether it's serving another and paying attention to what is going on in that whole time. But the quiet of coming back, being somewhere where you would allow yourself to trust God with the deepest of your heart matters. That's the season we are in. Allow God to shine the light. Allow God to heal those really hurting places to bring some peace. And may God do that, not just on us, in us individually, but as a whole as a people of God, and in the wider creation. That the kingdom of heaven may come, that this journey Jesus makes, and that we now follow behind, that that journey matters, makes a difference, and there's something beyond it. May God bless this journey. May you open wide your hearts, and may the Spirit move. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker, and Redeemer.
Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We will be offering the imposition of ashes out in the parking lot between 12.30 and 1.30 thereabouts, and you are invited to join us for that if you are able and desire to do so. We will do it in a safe manner as cars come by. Uh, just know that it's available to you at that time. Please join us in the reading of Psalm 51. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Please join in kneeling, and we will offer this litany of penitence together, back and forth here, but at home, together with all those in their homes and wherever they are. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. 
our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, we confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work, we confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, we confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent, and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please take a moment to share a sign of the peace with one another. I do have a few announcements this morning. One of which is that our imposition of ashes will be offered in the parking lot, as I said earlier. Roughly 12.30 to 1.30, we will see you out there, Dorsey and I. And we will offer those for anyone who comes by that would like them. There will be signs up so that you can find where to go. And uh, we will be there waiting for you. Our Lenten series for 2021 is called Life Transformed, The Way of Love in Lent. You can see the details of this in the Spirited Times, also in your worship leaflet. If you have any questions about it, please contact Gretchen Strohmeyer at the office. There are also other options available to you if that is one that does not work for your time and schedule. Living the Way of Love, which is an opportunity to do a day-by-day -day reflection in a book that is available to you at the office for $13. We just ask that you let us know um, that you're coming or by calling the office or contact, 
contacting us by email, the other option. There are also 2021 Lenten meditations. I leave that for you to look at in more detail. And I do want to announce that the Wrestling with the Truth of Colonization offering has been postponed until later this spring in the hopes that we may be able to do this in an in-person fashion. But uh, the date and time of that, the dates and time, will be given when we know more. At this time, let us join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.